Good evening. I'm Monica McCain Sanchez, and this is CB8 Speaks. I'm a public member of Manhattan Community Board 8, and I'm your host tonight. CB8 Speaks is a monthly program about issues of interest to the residents and businesses of Manhattan Community District 8, and that's comprised of the New York uh, Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island and defining the Upper East Side as from East 59th Street to East 96th Street on the north, from the East River to the east side of Fifth Avenue. Uh, this also includes th the entirety of Roosevelt Island. Community boards are local representative bodies. They're made up of 50 volunteers of each board. These people are appointed by the borough president in consultation with city council members who represent the districts that are involved. Manhattan has 12 community boards and we are one of them. Community boards play an advisory role to the city government on zoning, land use, community planning, the city budget process and coordination of municipal services, and a public member, which is what I am, we are ancillary to that. We do not vote, we um, assist and we participate in various committees. You can learn more about Community Board and getting involved in Community Board by visiting our, our website, which is www.cb8m.com. Now, tonight we have a fantastic program, a really exciting one. It is the Parks Committee of Community Board 8. And our guests tonight are Peggy Price and Barbara Rudder. Thank you for being here. Hi, Monica. Nice to be with you. Um, now, we have uh, lots of questions, and um, we're going to get started off just with the beginning about how each of you came on to the community board, because we, we want to encourage people to get involved. So how did you get started with community board? Well, I was active in this area um, many years ago in the 70s. I was very active in Corsher's Park and met wonderful people there, including Laura Mayer, who was the previous co-chair, and Betty Wallerstein. And I left to go to the suburbs to bring up my family. When I came back, I re-met and discovered the community board and through them and um, got hooked and applied and very happy to be part of it. Uh, what about you, Peggy? How did you get involved with the community board? And well, uh, it started through um, a, a city park. In the early 80s, I was uh, I wanted to present my photography at the Culture's uh, art show, and um, I, but I wasn't in time for the deadline. So I got asked to be on the art show committee instead. So I was on the art show committee for many years, then got to be on the board of the Culture's Park Association. Um, and was treasurer of it before I left to join the community board, which was eight years ago. But I was a public member of the Parks Committee before I got appointed to um, full membership on the um, Parks Committee. And, um, and I've been a co-chair of the Parks Committee for about the last six years. Who else is on the Parks Committee? It's not just you two carrying no. the burden. How many other people and, and what do they do with you? There's seven members counting us. They're all very active and wonderful and care about parks. But uh, like other committees in the community board, our meetings are open to any, any community board member that wants to attend. They're able to vote on issues. So there's more than that unusual time, but there is the core of seven of us. And not just a regular meeting. You've had special forums with other parks committees, That's too. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now, what is the general mission and purpose of the Parks Committee? Well, I'd say broadly, our mission is to ensure that uh, parks in our area remain attractive places for people to go for rest, recreation, and to enjoy the outdoors. And besides that, I'd say that uh, we're also uh, working to try to expand our limited park space in whatever way that we, we can and whenever opportunity um, presents itself. Could you explain to the audience what you mean by limited? That's pretty uh, uh, powerful uh, or a very important point about Community Board Aid, isn't it? We understand that uh, in the city of New York we have some of the least um, acreage in terms of open public parkland. And, um, and it's, well, we need to really see what we can do to expand on what we have and um, improve what, what we have. Um, what are the typical issues that come before the committee? Barbara, you want? Okay. We 
have several issues that come in front of the committee. Um, we've been dealing a lot. We have a, very unusual times with the fiscal crisis. So we've been dealing a lot with uh, issues of privatization and commercialization. Um, the city needs some money, and we've had that, and we've been fighting with that. Uh, do you want to take over from the, or I'll go through some of the, the basic uh, issues. Uh, the other is just to maintain our parks, to, to get more parks, but to maintain, beautify, and enhance some of the parkland that we do have. So those are two major missions that we do have. Yeah, uh, Barbara's got it right. Uh, what we, um, we're endeavoring to do is to, as I mentioned before, expand to the extent we can on what we have. However, we're running up against the problem of the city financial crisis. And even as we embark on some major projects we're going to tell you about, the, we're, um, we're facing a lot more pressure from the city to try to eke revenues out of the parkland we have. And this has created um, a number of um, uh, constraints and very time-consuming ones and even some showdowns over use of the space um, as, as the public's interest in having open space collides with the, the city's need to find revenue sources and its look to parks to provide them. Mm. Um, but maybe Barbara could start with telling you on the bright side what we're doing that's um, you know forward-looking and innovative. Well, I'll start with one that's very dear to my heart. We have this wonderful waterway, the East River Esplanade that we have in our district, but it's in terrible condition. I think anybody that lives in our district knows how wonderful it is to walk uh, along the water or to sit with a cup of coffee and, and on a beautiful summer or spring day and to sit and watch the boats. And it's very well used by everybody, but it's in absolutely terrible condition. And one of our missions is to work to beautify this. We are told that before we can do that, we have to fix it. it, it I, I, my analogy is that before you can wallpaper a wall, you have to make sure that the leak is fixed so that you're not wallpapering over the leak. And there's some very bad um, conditions. So the underpinnings are in very bad condition. And it, we need money, and not just a little bit of money, a lot of money. This would be a major project to do it. So we are working very very hard with our elected officials who have taken it on and have indicated an interest to work with us and other um, the, uh, other um, city agencies to make sure this has been done. So this is something we're working on. We hope that it will. Um, we've done some other things. You want to talk? Um, yeah, there's another project we've embarked on that's uh, quite innovative, and um, we hope we've already got the ball rolling on it to some extent, which is um, we would like to create the city's first older adults recreation area. And we found an area in John Jay Park at 77th Street. Um, um, we want to, um, we're asking the Parks Department to install in that area, which is right now very underutilized, um, not only benches and checker tables and new plantings and um, um, surfacing, but also um, what's really innovative is a series of exercise equipment, outdoor exercise equipment oriented to um, middle age or older people. Um, I have seen this. Actually, I've tried it, this equipment in Shanghai. A lot of fun. Really attracts a lot of people. Um, and um, But I've just read that London just um, unveiled its first recreation center for older adults. And the concept also exists in Canada. So we're thinking if we could get this um, created in John Jay Park, it might be something that we would like to expand in our own district and um, encourage the Parks Department to um, spread throughout the city. We have, as you know, an aging population, and um, there's no doubt that this would be quite a, um, 
important and attractive asset to that sector of our community. That's very exciting. Uh, what's the process you have to go through to get people aware of this? Well, what we've done is um, first we called up um, our uh, our city councilwoman Jessica Lappin and um, informed her that we would like to proceed, and also spoke to various people in the Parks Department about our idea. We we passed a resolution in December um, asking the Parks Department to proceed to um, determine the scope of work, and we have gotten back from the Parks Department a cost estimate that we've passed on to the city council. And um, so uh, we're hoping that from here we'll, we'll see how it goes, but we'll certainly um, talk up the possibility of getting this funded right. and um, and we'll, we'll see what happens. It, as we mentioned, it's in an area of John Jay Park that isn't being used and what an ideal way to put the space to Absolutely. Best and in addition, it's a beautiful piece of land. It's right facing the water. Oh. And this is a park that's very small and very heavily used. There are private schools and public schools right near, so it's used by um, mothers, uh, parents with their small children, mm -hmm. uh, with school age people that come. And the seniors feel they would like to be able to come. And there's ball playing and there's a lot going on. So this is where we've met managed to find this beautiful piece of land that's underutilized that will serve a tremendous need. So it is a very exciting project. Does it, will you be talking about this project at each of your community uh, committee meetings that, you know, if people want to stay on top of this issue, they should come to your meetings, or or how are you going to communicate out uh, what the progress is? Well, I think the committee has to, um, first of all, we've been told we have to get the funding from the city for it. Of course, mm -hmm. that's always um, a question mark in these um, difficult financial times. Mm -hmm. um, after, we're told that the, the way the process works is that um, if we can get it funded, then the Parks Department will do it. <laughs> and so um, we just have to, the committee just has to keep promoting the idea to the funding sources. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully that will be um, the way we do it. And as, pro as we do with all the issues, is they become agenda items that are announced and uh, the public can come. We do encourage the public that's interested in it to come mm -hmm. and give their opinion. And um, it, so it's periodically on the agenda to keep an update on what's going on. What about hot topics that are coming up? You know, you're talking about the vision, the future. Do you have any controversies that you're dealing with these oh, days? Oh, never. <laughs> never? Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> I've been to some of the meetings. They're pretty, pretty exciting. Who would think with parks, right? Right. Well, we had a big showdown <laughs> at our February meeting. Um, and Barbara will tell you more, but let me just start off by saying that um, the issue arose uh, in the fall about the possibility of having um, the Queensboro Oval, which is now used f eight months a year uh, for indoor tennis, become um, a full-time tennis site. Mm -hmm. But the problem would be that that would eliminate um, the public's use of the space in the summer when the oval traditionally came down. Um, this would particularly impinge on softball players that rely on the field to play baseball. Barbara, why don't you go on? Well, the issue then became a sort of two-prong. One is that specifically these ball players, these leagues that play there, and there's many leagues and many uh, players, I think about 200 players that play there, will not have this land. But the other larger issue, again, is the issue of how much we want open space, and this open space will be taken away, uh, just about 100 percent taken up with this great big butt bubble that's under. And we had very lively, as you can imagine, meeting. Um, many people came out who were the ball players or the community people, speaking with um, great emotion about not wanting their space taken away and the alternatives are so limited and not good. But we also had people from the tennis clubs that came and said tennis is a wonderful form of, of uh, exercise and stays open late and we do want it. Um, we ended up voting very strongly for a resolution, the community board members very strongly to say that we want to uh, 
to keep this as four months a year as land for ball players for the community. People talked about bringing their children there to teach them how to ride bikes and runners practicing their their jogging and their their moves there. And we will be presenting it next week to the full board. And what is also very exciting is that it really was democracy at work and the borough, um, Manhattan Borough President Castro, um, not President, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner uh, Castro was there, and he promised that he would listen. We don't know what the end result will be, but we hope that our voices will be heard, and next week we'll see what the result is. It seems as if that particular issue was a sort of glaring example of what we're kind of facing with the parks in, the, in this critical financial time. Um, there's more choices to be made about how much the parks should be used for as revenue sources, as cash cows for the city, versus keeping them more pristine and um, ways to escape from the urban setting. And um, so actually, um, we're, we're being sort of, I would say, inundated with, uh, with flyers from the Parks Department about different kinds of pro uh, plans for concessions and, uh, and other revenue um, generating operations in parks. And, and this does create conflicts with the, the public. Some like the ideas, some don't. And it's, it's, uh, it seems that this whole issue of how much to tap parks for revenues has become much more heated in the last couple of years, this I've noticed, um, and so uh, it, it puts much more pressure on the Parks Committee to juggle different interests of, um, you can't say no to all requests for revenues. Um, on the other hand, you do want to um, keep your parks as pristine as you can. Um, so there, there is that issue. What, what was interesting is that Last spring, our Parks Committee created um, a forum. We held a forum on the commercialization of parks in Manhattan. And uh, this forum was uh, uh, unique, I guess, for having pulled together the chairs or co-chairs of eight of Manhattan's 12 uh, uh, at the chairs or co-chairs of the Parks Committees mm -hmm. of eight of uh, Manhattan's 12 community boards. So we got a really broad view of what's, uh, what were the city is up, you know, the issues in terms of privatization and commercialization of parks. And uh, from there, we passed a resolution spelling out, you know, what the, um, at least community board eight would like to, to see in some of the decisions that should be made around how much commercialization right. We want, um, but it, the the whole point of the the forum was to highlight the, this um, increased pressure on us to to find uh, you know or accept sources of revenue in our parks. Um, how is Central Park handled by? The committees. Central Park is handled by every community board that borders on it. I think it's five. Am I right? Mm -hmm. There's five community boards that border on Central Park. Mm -hmm. So every issue that comes that deals with Central Park goes to each of the five uh, community boards, and we vote on it mm -hmm. separate. Um, is is that a frequent topic at some of your meetings, Central Park, or is it mostly absolutely. within? It is. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. It's a big park and lots going on there. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you foresee to be important issues coming up in the next six to 12 months? Should, do you want Get to out your starting? crystal ball. Try to think. Well, I, yeah. I think it, in terms of um, we will be spending a lot of time on these initiatives mm -hmm. of the waterfront mm -hmm. and um, uh, park improvements uh, wherever we can. Um, I do think there's going to be um, a, a steady flow of requests for concessions and other revenue producing um, issues in the park mm -hmm. um, that will have to be handled. But the other thing is, uh, you know, we've talked about, okay, the, the, our community is really shortchanged in terms of mm -hmm. open public park space. And what can we do to expand on that? Now, obviously, the problem. Um, 
is made more acute by the fact that there is this financial crisis. Mm. However, there may be ways that we could seek out to get more open space available to the public, and we're going to be really um, scouting out to find what we can possibly do to open up more space in our community. That's great. I think if we can redo the waterfront, mm -hmm. that will make, even though we're not expanding the space, but it will make it so much more usable and enjoyable uh, that, that I think that will add something. Has it. there been a new addition down the south end of the Oh, waterfront? there's been a new additions in every area but ours, and that's been one of the uh, our pet peeves. There's been a lot of work being done on the waterfront, mm -hmm. and there is a waterfront plan that's being conceived now, and we want to be a very active and vocal voice in there to say, remember us, we need it. How involved is the community on a regular basis, except when there's a big controversy? Do you, if there's not some, you know, shocking development, do, do you find that people come to your committee, or, or is it just when there has to be a, a big issue? I think, you know, New Yorkers are busy people, mm -hmm. so um, they're not going to show up unless there's some burning reason to. Mm. Um, it does seem that there's often something <laughs> related to the parks, although mm -hmm. I have to say that the attendance at <coughs> February's meeting with the <laughs> Queensboro <laughs> Oval probably topped anything <laughs> that uh, has taken place in terms mm -hmm. of attendance while I've been a co-chair. Mm -hmm. People come, it will depend on the issue, mm -hmm. um, but there does seem to be an awful lot of interest in park-related issues, and the newspapers certainly seem to be covering the topic of uh, park land in the city of New York quite a lot. So. Well, was the Queensboro Oval got a lot of press coverage. Right. Do you get a, that kind of coverage normally? Or was that unusual? That was unusual. It was such a hot topic. And yeah. I think that was, un, that was unusual in many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we usually don't get that much. One of the papers, I think, kind of really made a, had found a, was the Daily News had a picture of Joe Namath playing softball yes. there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess you haven't heard from Joe Namath. So, no. yeah. <laughs> I did hear some whispering. Maybe that was it. Oh, OK. He snuck into the back of the meeting. Right. Right. <laughs> um, what are your, uh, you mentioned pet peeves. You must have a lot of pet peeves when things come up with it. Um, the parks that you cannot handle? Because you, don't you have kind of a standard mandate, or can you cover any type of, a, of issue with a park? I'm not aware of any limitation on right. what we can talk about or mm -hmm. address. And um, as we've been saying, that um, not mm -hmm. only do we react to what comes our way, but we go out and scout for how to improve the parks. Right. And um, so. Um, the sky's the limit as far as we're concerned. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, which, so, uh, but I think with pet peeves yeah. as general throughout the community board, yeah. we are just an a, um, advisory board, and sometimes we feel very strongly and we don't get our way, and that is a pet peeve. Oh. We would like to have full control in whatever we say that everybody reacts to. But that doesn't always happen. But that's true, I think, with every committee in the community board. And sometimes the pet peeves of people, the parks is something very personal about it. People really care when this tree isn't right and whatever. And mm -hmm. sometimes there's this feeling of frustration of, of wanting to help the person. And is it an issue that we want to tackle and so on? We do discuss that a lot. Do you go into a park and relax, or do you just walk in there going, oh, my God, I see a new problem, or, oh, they didn't do this? I mean, what do you feel like when you walk into a park? When I was on the board of the College Shores Park Association, one of the issues was um, dogs running around off-leash, mm -hmm. uh, which was annoying not only uh, because it could destroy the lawn, which was very costly to repair, but also because there is a dog run, well, actually two dog runs in Carl Shores Park, so there was no real need for the dogs to be running around off-leash. So I would go in there, and I couldn't stand it. There'd be dogs <laughs> running around everywhere. And I just, I'd either have to say something to them, and which I hate, and of course they'd get angry, mm -hmm. or I'd have to just turn and leave. I couldn't take it, you know? <laughs> so it can be hard. I mean, most of the time you go to the park to um, relax and, you know, 
and uh, maybe get a tan or something. But but it depends on the situation. If there's an issue that you're aware of and you see it happening, you want to call the police or something. So it has that. Do you make 311 calls when you're in the park uh, ever? I do with everything. I do walking <laughs> the street. I see a pothole and I call 311. It is very interesting. Again, this is not just parks, but generally. I was once asked about my experience on the community board, and I said you would never look at a tree or a street or a building in the same way again. And sometimes you feel like you're becoming negative because you find what's wrong. I still love parks. I, and when I'm on the west side, unless if the weather is halfway decent, I'd rather walk home and walk through the park. And I feel like it's my psychiatrist. It's a different world. I, I, I come out feeling calm. And a walk down the river is just um, along the East River Esplanade is just uh, wonderful for me. I love it. Plus, we're tree huggers. Yeah. You know, not, not <laughs> among the many projects, um, but so many trees have been felled as a result of, in order to provide for the construction of the Second Avenue subway. So, mm -hmm. we've been strongly on the case to ensure that we obtain all the 444 trees our district is owed as a result of the trees cut down for the Second Avenue subway. Mm. So we've been very active and, and we're doing quite well and, and we're, we're almost up to um, getting planted what we're owed. So we're very excited about yeah. it. Yeah, and it's amazing how that isn't a broad topic like the waterfront or something, but it really does affect people's lives. We do have people coming to the meeting because their wonderful 25-year-old tree is being knocked down or not doing well. And that's a little things that we can do that really does affect your everyday life. So it's nice. It's a nice feeling. We only have a couple minutes left, so we're going to do a snap poll with okay. you two. <laughs> What's your favorite park in Community District 8? Well, mine would be Carl Schur's Park, but I'm biased having been right. on the board a long time. Uh, I'm not now on the board, but mm -hmm. it is a lovely park. All sorts of amenities, that's what's particularly nice about it. Mm -hmm. There's the playground and, and areas for rest and relaxation, and the dog run in the basketball court, and all sorts of amenities. I agree. And then going on to the mm -hmm. East River Drive, but uh, two of my children grew up, I always said I should pay my rent to Kosher's Park and not to my landlord because I, I, we live there and I have a fond feeling for it. It's a wonderful park. How often do you get to the parks anyway? Do you make it, do you have to go or is this just something you For me you the winter normally... is less often than the summer mm -hmm. and uh, when I have a chance to walk I may walk two blocks out of the way to walk downtown by the river rather than uh, walk on First Avenue, Second Avenue. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I, it, I would walk through Central Park to get home. I'm often walking through a park rather than just sitting there. But in nice weather, I do like to sit there also. And Peggy, you said you've been to Shanghai and you've visited foreign parks. But I just noticed we're going to be wrapping it up right now. Hold that answer. So we're going to do another show. We're going to talk about other parks and comparing them to our community district. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks, Bye. everyone, for joining us. Have a pleasant evening.